today we're going to talk about DNA and RNA. And these concepts are not just essential to microbiology. The concepts are essential to all of biology, genetics, microbiology, human biology, mammalian, bi mamma mammalian biology, and almost all biology essentially is based on RNA and DNA. So the question again we ask is which came first, RNA or DNA? And the answer is RNA came first. And RNA really was one of the first molecules that arose from the primordial soup in the early days of the Earth, the Earth's formation. And that originally we had short RNA molecules that developed the capacity to replicate themselves. And then they also developed the ca capacity to store information. And eventually RNA ultimately turned into DNA. And we now today have both forms, RNA and DNA, that work together. Now, in terms of the early days of RNA, we had early RNA synthesizing protein and carrying information about how to synthesize the protein. And the information carrying role of RNA passed, we think, into DNA because DNA was more chemically stable. And the driving force to all of this was natural selection, that it was the molecules, the RNA molecules, that were the most efficient in carrying and storing information that ultimately turned into DNA. And the other part of DNA is that DNA is double-stranded, and so we can store more complex information. And DNA ultimately is a better mechanism for information storage of complex traits. And the other thing about DNA, of course, is remember in eukaryotic cells, we have the DNA stored in the nucleus. And that's another level of protection to the eukaryotic DNA. So how did RNA eventually develop into DNA? It all started with replicating molecules that DNA basically is able to, first of all, copy itself. And also, it's able to synthesize protein. So over time, we had the forces of natural selection determine the most efficient forms of RNA, which turned out to be uh, the functions that were preserved turned out to be replication, of course. And the other function was protein synthesis which really means being able to make protein from RNA. So RNA eventually, as we said, evolved into DNA. And you can see here, this is the process of transcription and translation, where DNA breaks apart and RNA copies the information from DNA and then goes out into the cytoplasm and assembles the protein based on the instructions that were carried from the DNA. So RNA was then, at that point, demoted to the role of messenger, and that proteins became responsible for the basic metabolic functions and reactions in the cells. And we will learn later on, those occur through the process of enzymatic uh, reaction. So DNA structure, uh, it, DNA is a double-stranded molecule. And on the outside of the molecule are these covalent bonds that are fairly strong. They hold the ladder together, essentially. And in between are hydrogen bonds. And those bonds are collectively strong, but individually they're, they are weak. And the elegance of the hydrogen bonds is that they can be broken apart and brought back together fairly easily. And in the case of DNA, we have various enzymes that serve the role of breaking apart and then reassembling the DNA. 
So DNA is stored inside the chromosome. Now, even though this electron micrograph makes this chromosome look fairly thick, inside each arm of the chromosome is a single DNA double-stranded molecule. And we'll see that in the next picture. Here you can see that down here we have this double-stranded DNA molecule that's wrapped around these histones and that those are wrapped around and around and around each other until we get this nuclear scaffolding and ultimately it forms the thickness that is found in the chromosomes. So DNA has two major nucleic functions. Function number one is transcription. Function number two is replication. Now transcription, if you can think about what does the word transcription mean, it means essentially uh, assembling the information. So if you go to see somebody to get something transcribed, basically that means the information is copied over. However, the information doesn't have to be exact. Whereas in replication, the word replication means exactly copying. So replication of DNA occurs when the cell divides. So when the cell divides, we need to create exact copies of the DNA that will be passed on to the daughter cells. Now in transcription, what we want to do is we want to copy the information from DNA to the RNA and then with that information copied, we translate it into proteins. And we're going to learn much more about this in the microbial genetics lecture. So again, the function of DNA, there are two functions. There is replication, which is the complete and exact copying of DNA, and transcription and translation, which is copying the information from DNA, transcribing and then translating uh, into RNA, which then um, assembles the protein. So DNA replication is the complete unzipping of the DNA double strand and the assembly of complementary nucleotides to form two new identical molecules of DNA. So essentially both sides of the DNA double strand are copied and, and a complete duplicate is formed passed to the daughter cells, and this DNA replication only occurs in cell division. It does not occur, occur in protein synthesis. So here's another picture of DNA replication. So you can see the strands, uh, the two-sided strands of DNA are pulled apart, and then each side is copied exactly and then eventually we have two new molecules of DNA. Now DNA transcription and translation on the other hand is passing the information from DNA all the way down to the protein level. So here we have DNA being transcribed and this actually is occurring in the nucleus. And then the uh, messenger RNA travels to the cytoplasm where these uh, amino acids are assembled according to the directions and the information passed from the DNA. And then these proteins are assembled and uh, modified after synthesis. And then ultimately they're used uh, for transport purposes. They're released from the cells in the form of hormones, for instance, or they're used actually within the cell uh, to regenerate and various other functions that are performed by protein. Uh, so our first example has to do with which DNA process results in protein synthesis. So we go back and we remember what are the two major functions of DNA. 
One is replication, okay, and the other is protein synthesis. Now, protein synthesis, remember, originates from DNA transcription and translation. So remember, that's DNA transcription. Okay. Uh, the next example has to do with inheritance. Now that's the key word, inheritance, meaning that you want an exact replication. So the answer to the second example is, of course, replication. Now the third example has to do with which DNA function occurs in bacteria. That requires that you go back and you remember what are the similarities between bacteria and eukaryotic cell. Number one, bacteria also has DNA and RNA. So the answer to what DNA functions occur in bacteria are both functions occur. Remember, both functions are what? Replication and transcription and translation. So that concludes our lecture for today. Thank you very much for visiting educator.com.